हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद सोसाइटी आर जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग द बुक योगा एसेस फॉर सेल्फ इम्प्रूवमेंट ऑथर्ड बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मयानंद जी महाराज narrated by myself swami nikhilananda so in today's satsang we will be dis, uh, discussing discovery of the self by removing mental illusions the attainment of self realization is not a fruit of action but it is the revelation of the ever abiding reality this word self realization which is also the main theme of our mission in life and also of this channel swami jyotirmayananda society is to guide aspirants and for all of us to walk on the journey of self realization but yet it is very confusing to many people what is self realization it is not something to be achieved or attained you don't create it it's already there we simply have to reveal it that which arises as a fruit of action is confined to time and space but the self it's beyond time and space therefore the scriptures assert that the self cannot be acquired by action but by knowledge alone vidya just like darkness is removed by creating light you can't push out darkness by force you have to create light this however does not mean that an aspirant should shun all activity in order to attain self realization rather he needs to perform actions with the skill provided by the art of karma yoga that's what bhagavad gita says yoga karmasu kaushalam yoga is skill in action the same actions that create bondage when performed with an egoistic vision of fulfilling desires begin to purify the mind when they are performed with the spirit of selflessness so it's the intent that matters more not the action itself it can be the very same action it can be satvik tantric or rajasic it depends on how you approach it with what mental thought this spirit of selflessness is fostered by the devotional attitude that i am a mere instrument in the hands of the divine hands i am simply this is how lord hanuman used to think about all his actions he did for his beloved lord rama so and there is a vedantic attitude that i am the non doer self i am simply all of this is happening through the glory of the self so if we want to walk on this path sincerely then we should not take too much credit for what we have done we are instruments of the divine will of course our self effort is needed our intellect is needed but all that has been given to us as tools if you climb mountain summits you behold the grandeur of the vast sky you do not create the expansive views of the sky they existed even before you began your climb similarly you must climb the path of spiritual sadhana in order to realize the ever abiding self in you you must climb the mountainous heights of mysticism by understanding illusions and consequently removing them as the illusions of the mind are destroyed by increasing knowledge you become aware of the increasing expansion of the self when the veil of ignorance the source of all illusions is removed you develop the intuitional vision which reveals your essential identity with the absolute self so the journey is more of purification of cleansing the inner the within so that the light of the absolute self can shine through this is the goal of yoga in vedanta philosophy there are five types of illusions or bhrantis that are discussed bhrantis are 
illusions. So the number one is Bhed Bhranti, the illusion of difference. Bhed means duality, difference, seeing something as um, uh, something outside of you, different. Due to ignorance, the mind develops these notions that I am different from God. God is different from the world. I am different from other human beings. All human beings and objects are different from each other. To facilitate the removal of this illusion, the aspirant should meditate on the illusion of the sun and its reflections. Though the sun is only one, it has many reflections in different bodies of water. In the same way, in spite of the apparent differences, the self is one. Karta Bhokta Pan Bhranti The illusion of actorship and doership. The notion, I am the doer and enjoyer, is a mental illusion which must be removed in order to discover the true nature of the self and realize, I am that Atman, the self. The illustration of a crystal and a rose is presented to remove, to help you to understand and remove the illusion. When they are together, the crystal seems colored by the rose. But when the rose is removed, the crystal is clear and transparent. In the same way, due to the proximity of the mind and senses, the self is colored as it were by the illusory notion of actorship and enjoyership. When these limiting adjuncts are removed by wisdom, the self is realized as it is untainted, unaffected, like that clear, transparent crystal. Number three, Sangha Bhranti, the illusion of contact or association. The idea that the self is in contact with the body, the mind, the senses and the objects of the world is false. How can the sky be in contact with the clouds? The illustration of pot ether or the space inside the pot is often used to help remove this illusion. Just as the contents of a pot do not affect the pot ether, so the body, mind and senses do not affect the self. When the pot is broken, the ether merges with the universal ether. In the same way, when the body idea is negated, the soul merges with the absolute self. Essentially, the self is detached without associations and free. Number four, is Vikara Bhranti, meaning the illusion of modification. The erroneous understanding that somehow Brahman or the self has actually become modified into this world process like milk and yogurt is a great hindrance to one's realization of the self. If the self is subject to modifications, then it is perishable as are the objects of the world. But we know that's not the case. So in which case the attainment of self-realization would have become Im impossible. So self is called kutast or meaning unchangeable, untaintable, birthless, deathless, etc. All these attributes. The illusory snake superimposed on a rope at twilight does not affect the rope in any way. The rope will be the rope. <laughs> you are seeing the snake in the rope, so therefore that illusion has to be removed, isn't it? In the same way, the world is superimposed on Brahman, and this superimposition is as illusory as the snake in the rope. When you really understand this fact, you will not be deluded in any way by any wrong notions about the reality of the cause and effect relationships. Brahman is not involved in causation because all cause and effect relationships are based upon a form of superimposition. Number five is Jagasatya Bhranti, meaning that the illusion of the reality of the world. The mind deluded by the reality of objects is unable to see the self as the reality 
underlying all the names and forms. Just as waves seem to hide the ocean or golden ornaments seem to hide the gold, so too names and forms seem to hide the self. If you reflect upon these two illustrations, you will realize all this is the self or Brahman. By meditating on all the illustrations mentioned above, your understanding of the self will be intensified. So don't just listen to it. After you listen, reflect upon it, meditate upon it, understand and then it will start to become clear. Remove the illusions of the mind. When the clouds disperse, the light of the sun begins to illumine the earth. In the same way, with the removal of illusions, the light of the self begins to reveal itself through wondrous qualities of the head and heart. Contentment, compassion, universal love, balance of mind, serenity, endurance, faith, mastery over the senses, renunciation of egoistic involvements, discriminative intellect, dispassion and similar qualities are like rays emanating from the self. When you discover these virtues within yourself, you can be sure that the clouds of illusion are gradually dispersing from the ether of your heart. When you realize, I am that, then the clouds of illusion are completely blown away by the mighty wind of deep meditation and divine grace. Live to battle against the illusions of the mind and attain self-realization. May God bless you. So I hope you enjoyed this satsang. These are deep, profound satsangs. One of these can shed the light on yourself and give you enlightenment. Which one? It has to depend on you. It has to resonate with you. So continue this journey with love and faith and may you all be enlightened. In tomorrow's satsang, we will discuss how to remove misunderstanding which is the cause of so many troubles in this life. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Hari Om Tatsat.